Hey, what's up guys? Today, I'll show you a horror film. Nobody Sleeps in the Woods Tonight, Part 2. Spoiler ahead, watch out and take care. The movie begins with Ada's dreaming about saving a maiden in a room filled with vampires during the Victorian era. He heroically shoots them one by one with his shotgun and handgun. He frees the girl from the chains. Therefore, she gives him a smelly tongue massage in return, but it ends abruptly because he wakes up from sleep. Afterward, Adas tidies himself for work as constable police in a small town. He then receives a call from the sergeant requesting him to buy two hot dogs and drinks on his way to the police station. Adas drives his bike to a nearby convenience store. He orders two hot dogs and two orange juices upon arriving. Just then, he witnesses the cashier kicking a smelly dog. Before leaving, Adas imposes he's an officer and hurting an animal is a law violation. But the cashier doesn't care at all and even rudely makes him leave. After fulfilling the sergeant's request, Adas goes to the police station. He checks his office and sees Constable Senior, who's busy writing a report in her office. He asks her if she wants an orange juice, but she declines the offer, saying she doesn't like citrus drinks. Afterward, he checks the prison cells, the mutated twins quietly sitting beside each other, and in the next cell, Zoja from Camp Adrenaline. Momentarily, the sergeant comes out from the bathroom and asks Adas for the food he requested. The sergeant then enters his office, followed by Adas. Adas asks for information about the three new prisoners in the cells. The sergeant sits opposite Adas and explains that the girl camper, Zoja, visited the police station all bloody last night, blabbering about meteorites and her dead friends killed by the mutated twins. However, the sergeant finds it hard to believe when Zoja claims she killed the first mutant twin with a machete and the second twin by running over a car. Everything sounds crazy, and Adas only manages to ask the sergeant if they should call the regional headquarters. The sergeant had called the capital already, and he's expecting the special forces tonight or the following day. The sergeant adds that he and Constable Senior handled the mutated twins with a few hits of baton and taser. After learning the three prisoners' origin and information, Adas gives a cup of water to Zoja in her prison cell. They exchange names first, but then the sergeant arrives to cuff Zoja's hands, for they will do a field visit. Later, the sergeant drives to the Blue House with Zoja in a police car. The Blue House is where the mutated twins leave, and the sergeant interrogates Zoja to learn everything that happened from the beginning. Amidst the interrogation, the sergeant suddenly has the urge to visit the toiletry, so he handcuffs Zoja onto the twins' bed while he goes out to do his business. While Zoja waits for the sergeant, below the bed is a rock kept by the twins. Black liquid oozes from the rock and moves towards Zoja. When the sergeant returns to the blue house, Zoja's handcuff is on the floor and the bed is wrecked. The sergeant searches for Zoja, but he ends up getting torn in half. His intestines bleed as blood gushes out of his muscles and waist. He tries to crawl away, but he's losing too much blood and thus dies momentarily. It's already night, and Ada's worries in the police station because the sergeant and Zoja haven't returned yet. So he asks Constable Senior if she wants to join him, but she only suggests calling the sergeant first. Adas calls the sergeant through the phone and the radio, but no one answers. So he decides to visit the crime scene themselves. At first, Constable Senior declines the offer, but eventually, she gives in. Constable Senior drives the police car with Adas accompanying her. Outside the blue house is the police car driven by the sergeant. They enter the house, discovering Zoja's handcuffs on the floor and a smashed bed. Then, on the other side of the room was the sergeant, lying dead in half on the floor. Panic surges through Ada's mind, proposing they should wait for the special forces to come and save them. However, Constable Senior wants to bravely deal with the monster Zoja all by themselves, because she believes it's their job as police to keep the town safe and not rely upon the special forces that will come later. For Ada's, there are only two of them to deal with the monster Zoja. However, Constable Senior believes they're not alone. And so, she calls the territorial defense duo for backup. Meanwhile, two stout brothers sit on couches at their home, comfortably watching television and eating chump foods. They receive a telephone call. One of the brothers, named Marius, answers the telephone. And when he learns what happened in the blue house, he and his brother, Slock, hear up. In Camp Adrenaline, the camp manager vents out his frustration against the teen's obsession with the current technologies to the prostitute accompanying him. He's mad that the gadgets turn teens into apathetic beings that need to be cured. So this is why he built Adrenaline Camp to help with the supposed problem. Upon his venting, the whole camp suffers from a sudden blackout. So the camp manager leaves the prostitute alone and goes outside the main cabin to check the camp's power panel. 
He opens the panel, finding slashed and cut cables and wires of the electricity. As his head draws near the panel, Zoja appears from behind and electrocutes the camp manager by pushing his whole face towards the cables. On the other hand, the brothers arrive in the blue house to assist in the search for Zoja. They believe they are skilled enough to track a beast like Zoja by following the footprints, so they venture deeper into the woods in the middle of the night. En route, Adis keeps on opposing Constable Senior's intention to fight the monster Zoja, while the brothers set bear traps on bushes for chances that Zoja might return. Meanwhile, Slock separates from the group to set a bear trap to another place. However, he accidentally mutilates his own hands in the bear trap. Everyone's first instinct is to panic, especially Marius, as blood spurts out of his brother's wrist. The two constables rip off a piece of cloth from Marius's outfit and wrap it around Slock's two bleeding wrists. After dressing the wound, Adas calls for an ambulance to arrive at Camp Adrenaline. Then, Marius and Adas carry Slock as they travel to the camp, while Constable Senior picks up Slock's hands on the ground and into the bag. The group arrives at Camp Adrenaline. But horror takes over their faces as they find the ambulance parked nearby the main cabin all bloody. When Constable Senior opens the back door, two hospital staff inside the ambulance are gutted out. From afar, Adas sees Zoja standing and howling. So he quickly reacts, rushing everyone inside the main cabin while Constable Senior retrieves the first aid kit. Upon their arrival inside, they lock themselves away from Zoja. Then Marius lays his brother on the couch, while Adis tells Constable Senior that Zoja looks like the twins in the cell. While the two constables are busy shouting at each other, a noise erupts from the cabinet. A sign of relief brightens their face as they see the prostitute still alive and well hiding inside. While the group is happy to see her, Slock gasps for his last breath on the couch and passes away. The prostitute notices Slock not moving, and so Marius rushes to his brother's side, trying to wake him up. When Adis tries to cover the corpse with a blanket, Marius pushes him away. Marius then tells everyone he wants to take his brother home through the ambulance, but Constable Senior disagrees with this and wants to stick together and fight Zoja. The group eventually falls into an arguing pit. Marius wants to go home because there's nothing to do anymore, but Constable Senior wants to finish off what they started. Meanwhile, Ada still imposes his offer to wait for special forces to arrive, thus making Constable Senior mad because she believes waiting is pointless. Then, here's the prostitute, trying to mediate everyone to come up with an agreeable decision. They all start insulting each other, but Adis. Adis reminds everyone to show empathy to one another, because they need to survive together and not tear each other apart. His speech convinces everyone to apologize, and they eventually come up with a plan. They deploy a classic police setup where the bait is left in the middle, while police surround the bait in hidden sight. They have the vantage point, where they prepare their guns to shoot Zoja when she falls for the trap. So the group executes the plan. The prostitute stations in the middle of the camp, Ada's on top of the ambulance car, Constable Senior in a cafeteria, while Marius hides behind a tent. At first, Marius accidentally fires a bullet, scaring the rest of the group in their station, which however, leads Zoja to find Marius first. Zoja thrusts her hand onto Marius's stomach, rips out his intestines, and rips off his tongue next. The prostitute notices from her station that Marius has disappeared from her sight, so she checks it out. But the two constables ask her to return to the middle. However, while she's returning to her place, Zoja appears from the back and jumps onto the prostitute. Constable Senior starts shooting blindly in the air, where she keeps on missing Zoja. Luckily, Adas approaches her to stop her, and they dash to the main cabin. Anger fuels Adas as he shouts at Constable Senior that she should have listened to him in the first place, to wait for special forces to arrive. However, Constable Senior's pride and gullible ambition to stop the monstrous Zoja cause early deaths to the three people close in their life. The two constables momentarily reconcile through an embrace. Their moment, however, is interrupted when Zoja throws the prostitute's hands onto the window. Zoja then opens the cabin door, holding the prostitute's decapitated head and tosses it onto the two constables' feet. Adas withdraws his handgun and points it at Zoja, but Constable Senior suddenly pushes Adas into Zoja. While Zoja is distracted, Constable Senior drives away with the ambulance. The moment she arrives at the police station, she contacts for backup on the radio, but no one answers. She throws the radio away in frustration and cries like a fat baby because she knows she's now alone. Meanwhile, Zoja lifts Adas in the air, tosses him onto the floor, and straddles on top of him. Then she elongates her juicy but smelly tongue, moving in the air like a snake, and inserts the juicy tongue onto his mouth to infect him with the same black fluid. Adis transforms into a mutated monster, like Zoja and the mutant twins. He asks what's happened to him while touching his face. 
In front of the main cabin's fireplace, Zoja explains the truth and origin of the black fluid she transferred to him. It turns out the meteorite chunk underneath the twins' bed is part of the moon that landed on Earth. The black fluid is evil that entered the twins' and Zoja's body. They're now monsters who kill people, because that's their nature and instinct. After the revelation, Ada's and Zoja play with their new monstrous ability. Ada's chooses the cashier from the convenience store as their next prey. At first, they scare him, gradually building up tension to make the cashier think he's hallucinating. Afterward, they invade the cashier's house, hide behind a closet, bang the door to make a noise, and wait for the cashier to open it. The cashier is about to open it, when suddenly, his shitty dog barks up, as a neighbor catches its hormone attention. Just then, Adis sneaks behind the cashier's back, and when he turns around, Adis stabs the cashier's right eye with a knife. The cashier removes the knife and kneels as he falls into death arms. When the place is empty with themselves, Zoja begins to tongue massage Adis. Thus, the two copulate on the cashier's bed, enjoying their mutated body parts and a furious but mutated hormone game. Afterward, they praise each other, assuring that they both did great during their session. Ada's then asks why she chose him, and Zoja answers that the moment she saw him in the police station, she feels that they are alike in everything. Soon after, the two monsters leave the house, and Ada's plays with the smelly dog from the convenience store earlier for a moment. Eventually, Zoja comes up with a plan to visit the police station and release the mutant twins from the cells. So the two monsters arrive at the station, open the twins' cell door, but the twins are not moving out. It turns out Constable Senior is waiting for the moment to kill them all. She appears from the far end of the corridor and starts shooting her rifle onto Ada's and Zoja. The two monsters hide in the twins' cell, and Constable Senior throws a grenade near the cell, but it doesn't explode. So Ada's volunteers to end Constable Senior's life, where he runs to her and chokes her. However, Ada's struggles to kill Constable Senior. Zoja tells him to end her life, but Ada still can't do it. So Zoja finishes her off by skinning her face and stomping on her face numerous times. The movie ends with Zoja leaving Ada's behind in the police station out of disappointment, believing he's cheating on her and her mutated feelings. Zoja walks away from the station, but a police car runs over her instantly. It turns out, the special forces are arriving, and every car they drive runs over to the mashed-up body of Zoja. Ada's is left alone outside the station, and special forces surround and capture him, where they bring him into custody. Just then, the police station explodes as the grenade from earlier suddenly blows up late, and the mutant twins inside die innocently due to the explosion. Afterward, Ada's ends up in a laboratory, where a scientist is drilling his brain for further experiments. This is Daniel CC Movie Channel. Stay safe and enjoy your day.